This is the Bicells Nova 233. More specifically, this is the Bicells Nova that is the TDD model, which does band 48, and it is a one watt model. So it outputs at one full watt with two antenna ports and a GPS port. Today, we're going to be connecting this Bicells to the Open5GS EPC. Stick around and welcome to the Land Ranger. So first things first, these are the interfaces that this Bicells have, or has rather. We have a DC 48 volt input with an optical uh, input for data. And then we've got a copper RJ45 that you can also use for data. And um, I'm not going to be using optical with it, but you could actually use both ports, one for management and then one for the data plane. But um, I don't have any more SFPs to use for this, so we're just going to stick with the uh, good old RJ45 and uh, get this thing connected. Um, it's pretty beefy, so it weighs uh, maybe, I'd like to say maybe 10 pounds or so. I'm not 100% sure, but got this nifty little thing here for uh, the uh, power cable, which I actually had to make myself because it comes unterminated and um, just used an old uh, PC power cable. Then um, it's got this weatherproofing uh, or weather stripping here, which is starting to kind of fail because this did come from a uh, working cell site. Um, and of course it's CBRS. So, or at least that's what the eBay listing said was that it came from a working cell site <clears throat> but as you can see here's our uh, in female uh, inputs and outputs um, antenna 0 and antenna 1 got some beefy cooling fins on the back here and I guess the previous owner uh, actually sealed this silicone um, around these antenna ports um, of course we got the ground here and uh, it's never actually been opened, or at least if it has, it's been strategically opened. But um, yeah, this is the Nova. And we're gonna be connecting a UE to it as well as uh, testing speed on it. And since it's TDD, we'll take a look at the spectrum and see what the spectrum looks like. Um, since there's no uh, uplink or downlink separation on TDD, it's, it's just uh, one full sweep so yeah we'll get to see that and uh hopefully this will make a good video first things first with these sort of videos i gotta get my sdr out of my junk drawer and also gotta get the patch cable for it so i'll get all that set up and we'll start testing as you've seen earlier i had to create my own little power cable for this since it came unterminated and it actually came with an LED driver power supply. Uh, these are typically used in LED signs like a C6 or what have you. Um, I actually used to install uh, these uh, at the previous workplace that I um, learned a lot about these at. So uh, these things are pretty beefy. Um, you could actually use them for a lot more than just this. Um, so. It's no surprise they decided to repurpose it for this. It's way cheaper than going and buying an official um, power supply. But here's our antenna. Um, this is what it came with. I assume this is just something that they tested in the lab. Um, but I've just decided to reuse these. And um, of course, I'm not going to be putting it outside right now. So we'll just connect these antennas and see how it behaves. And since this is one watt, I'm not going to be uh, keeping this in the office. I'm actually gonna hang these antennas out of the room. Not that it's necessarily um, a bad thing to be around it, it's just more of a personal preference. So, I'll go ahead and get this thing powered up and uh, stick those antennas out the window. Now, when making the network connection on these, um, uh, by default, they're all DHCP. So even if this thing came brand new to your house or whatever, 
and you were wanting to test, as long as it's factory defaulted, these are just DHCP. So they will just get an IP address and whatever untagged VLAN you have on their uh, interface, and they'll just start working for management purposes. So what I like to do when I'm testing these is I just grab them like this, and I sit them out the window, just like that. Move that right there, and bring the power supply over, and plug it in. Should just start booting at this point. go ahead and pull up my switch and look at the log here so today is the sixth and uh, I assume port 2 is going to be where this ENB is plugged into, so we're going to just do show FDB port 2. Doesn't seem to have a MAC address yet, so we'll show port 2. And I called it RxG WAN, but it's definitely not RxG WAN, so let's see if we got... Well, we got a 1 gigabit link, but... There it is. Now we're learning a MAC address. This is our login page. And here's what the main page looks like. Uh, the default password for these is just admin and admin, username admin, password admin. Um, I do not have the GPS installed. You don't necessarily need the GPS. Um, it's good to have it, but you don't have to have it. So uh, it's one of those things where I don't know why you necessarily need it to lab it up. Um, I could see why you would want to do it in the field, but just for lab purposes, there's no harm in not using the GPS. <clears throat> so I wanted to show some of the configuration. Because um, I did fiddle around with this just to try and figure out what I was doing with it. Um, it's pretty straightforward, though. Uh, so you just set your MME IP address. Um, of course, I set it from one end to... Uh, I did not use IPsec for user plane interface binding because I am in the same layer 2 broadcast domain. So there's really no reason for me to use IPsec. Um, as far as this LGW here, this is actually a pretty neat feature. The way that this works is instead of forwarding the traffic to the SGWU or the UPF, basically it lets the UE get an IP address and then it will literally just give the... Uh, management interface a second MAC address so it learns uh, another MAC address which then gets another IP address and it nats the UE's traffic behind that. This wouldn't be good if you were deploying this in say like a, a WISP environment but it might be good if you were running low on IPs and you wanted a little more granular control. Um, but as far as the MME and IPsec binding, to get this thing connected to open 5GS you literally just do this. Um, just put your MME IP in there. It's, it's crazy how simple it is. Um, the WAN, LAN, VLAN, I left all this to fall and just let it get DHCP. So it's getting DHCP from my FortiGate. Um, as far as LTE goes, I did make some changes in here. And uh, yes, this is legal. Um, I actually got this registered with a uh, SAS, Google SAS, and um, it does have CPI sign off. I am going to permanently mount it just for playing around, but uh, right now it's not necessarily in the most ideal of environments, but uh, <laughs> it works. Let's go to advanced. I forgot where all these settings were, but uh, I think they were in here. Enode bead settings. This is where I just set my Enode bead name. 
um, which I guess we could probably do this. Mm, that's not good. Did uh, did Open Five GS go down? Oh, well, that's no bueno. Let's go over here and look at basic info. It's connected to the MME. Um, interesting. CD or log. Let's see, log, open, hmm, I forgot where I, oh, it literally was in log, ha, huh. tail, f, log, so, that's not what I wanted, ls, cd, open, 5gs, I think, yeah, tail, f, dash, okay. Yeah, that's fun. Looks like the EMV has registered. I think I was wanting to show one more thing. It does have Halo B, which is like its own little built-in, um, its own little built-in EPC. Where is the... TDD, I don't remember where that is. It might be in here. I think it might be in advanced. <clears throat> no. Yeah, this is the... Or is it in... Oh, it's in, it's in, I know where it is. It's in quick settings. The way that they hide things is uh, strange. <clears throat> yeah, here it is, TDD mode, uh, 20 megahertz of bandwidth. So, um, it's, it's pretty wide open. All right, so now let me show you how this looks. But um, you can actually see that my IP is uh, 10.110.0.117. There's my uh, IMSI and the local gateway Mac. So if we actually go to the switch again, and then I do show FDB on that port, it actually has the local gateway uh, Mac address there. And um, we can see the uh, UL throughput and DL throughput. And then my phone is connected to lanes LTE. So now we could actually do a speed test. And um, it's not very good. Um, all things considered, the uh, setup is awful anyway, but it's just not that fast. The SDR is actually a little faster. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pull up SDR Angel so we can take a look at what this looks like here. And as you can see, the DL throughput actually updates as we do tests. Um, it's quite phenomenal really. And um, we could actually see what this looks like here once SDR Angel loads. Of course, it's starting to rain, so but uh, that's just what it sits there and looks like. Um, so just so that we know where we are in the frequency range, um, I actually need to go to here, so 3560. So if I come up here and I go 3560, and there it is. That's what it looks like. So it's actually 20 megahertz, band 48. And if we come back over here, we can do a speed test, and you can see that this actually starts to change on the waterfall.
and it's 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 fairly decent. Um, this would be good if you were trying to do like a Wisp or PLTE uh, demo or just learning more about the product and what you can do with it. Um, but it's mostly uh, just a cool product. Yeah, that's that's my fiance's pop socket on her phone. I hope uh, everyone enjoys that. But um, yeah, it's 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 more or less just a proof of concept and. Uh, is one of those things where you're just like, ah, oh, this is just so cool. But um, let's go back over here to 5GS. Not necessarily seeing anything interesting. Um, but what I did want to do is I want to actually install this properly with a better antenna. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a range test with this guy. This has a physical SIM that I was able to program um, it's not connecting right now because the SIM that I used is not in my open 5GS subscriber database. So we'll do that um, and do a range test just to see how far we can actually get with this. Um, little my five box in Seago and um, just see what we can do uh, with it. Oof, I did not mean to drop that. But um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to set this thing up. I mean, out of the box, nothing. And of course, we added it to their cloud core so that we have a uh, um, SAS connection. And uh, we'll do a range test. I know I've been trying to do a range test with the Halo bridges. And the reason I've been holding off on that is just because of how many things uh, I have going on. And, um, you know, been studying for stuff and uh, certification, so on and so forth, and, and work related things. But I do plan to get back in the business of just having fun doing cool lab stuff, especially with RF. And um, I got two of these now. So um, this one actually has an, uh, an actual AD9361 and not a rebranded or rebadged with low pass filters or anything like that. Um, so probably going to be doing some stuff with it as well. And I do plan to revisit Doxis. But this is just something that I thought was neat. Um, of course, I got a, like I said, I got a really good deal on it and I just wanted to play around with it. So... We'll get it professionally installed and then do some range tests just to see how far we can get with that one watt of power. Because uh, I think with a proper antenna, this would probably perform a lot better. And my favorite part about this is watching that spectrum when I pull the plug on this thing, you could actually see my phone send some probes out to try and find the tower again. That's my phone right there. And then my phone's like, oh, it's gone. Of course I can't. Can't do anything now, but yeah, stick around. A lot of uh, cool upcoming stuff. Like I said, just catching back up to things. I know it's been a while, but uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Thanks for joining.